Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I have a couple of questions from subscribers, and I'm going to combine these questions. The first one is, does intelligence really predict success? It's a good question. And the second one is, how is intelligence related to conscientiousness? Now, it's interesting, this relationship between intelligence and conscientiousness, so I thought it would be a good question to pair with the, is intelligence related to success question? So let's first take a look at intelligence. A lot of times when we talk about intelligence, when we talk about it from a measurement standpoint, we're talking about IQ. IQ is just one measure of intelligence. It is the best accepted measure, and it is the most valid measure that we have. There are other measures as well, though. There's general mental ability, SAT scores, grade point average. There's a lot of other measurements we use to try to understand and quantify the construct of intelligence. Intelligence is extremely complex, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use IQ. I'm going to say that IQ measures intelligence reasonably well. Now, does intelligence predict success? It does. Intelligence predicts a lot of things in life that we consider good. It predicts good mental health, good physical health, longevity, earnings, job performance, how high somebody will advance in organizations, how many times they'll be promoted. Intelligence is associated with a lot of good things. To pick one area in particular, when we think of success in life in terms of occupation, it's not unusual that we use wealth to understand success, so earnings more specifically. IQ is positively correlated with earnings. And if you look at the correlation and you square that value, that's called the coefficient of determination, R squared. And depending on what study you look at, the coefficient of determination between IQ and earnings is about 0.15, or 15%. And what that means is we can explain 15% of the variance in earnings by looking at just IQ. That leaves 85%, of course, that are explained by other variables. So IQ is a good predictor, but by no means the only predictor. And individuals with varying levels of IQ can have varying levels of earnings. It's just that we do see a pattern with high IQ and increased earnings. IQ does not limit necessarily somebody's earning potential. It's just a factor. So moving on to that second question about intelligence, which again I'll refer to as IQ, and conscientiousness. So really quickly, conscientiousness is one of the personality traits in the Big Five model. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. We remember this through the acronym OCEAN. Conscientiousness does have a relationship, of course, with IQ, but it's a surprising relationship. IQ and conscientiousness are negatively correlated. So, in general, as IQ increases, the level of conscientiousness decreases. So what does that mean? What is conscientiousness? Well, high conscientious individuals tend to be those that plan carefully. They tend to be organized, reliable, goal-directed. They look at tasks and try to plan out ways to complete them, and they're generally considered responsible. Individuals who score low on conscientiousness are more associated with impulsive behavior. So it's surprising, I think, that because IQ is associated with so many things that are good, and conscientiousness is associated with so many things that are good, that they would have a negative correlation. Now, some studies have it closer to no relationship between them, so closer to a correlation of zero. But either way, we would expect, as IQ increased, that conscientiousness would increase. It's a bit of a mystery. However, there are theories that attempt to explain why this happens. And they relate to this first question, which was, does IQ predict success? One of the most popular theories to explain the negative correlation between intelligence, IQ, and conscientiousness is that there's a compensatory 
factor at work. So what may be happening here is that individuals with higher IQs do not need to develop the conscientiousness components at an early age because they can use their intelligence. They can fall back on the intelligence. They don't have to be as organized. They don't have to plan as carefully. They don't have to be as goal-directed. Now we know that IQ is of course largely heritable, meaning it comes from a genetic component, but not entirely. And we know that conscientiousness is about 40% heritable. And we believe that the remainder, the 60% that's environmental, is formed mostly early on. Again, this is consistent with a compensatory model. In an early age, children are in school, children with higher intelligence don't need to develop the conscientiousness skills, the traits associated with conscientiousness, the facets. Individuals whose IQ may be lower still want to achieve, and they compensate through being conscientious. So they develop that personality trait early on. Individuals with higher IQs don't have to and therefore don't invest that effort and don't become conscientious. So what this really gets at is that even though IQ explains a lot of success, conscientiousness explains a lot of success too. Of all the personality traits, conscientiousness best predicts earnings, job performance, being promoted, and a lot of other positive factors just like intelligence. So we can look at it here as at least two routes to have a better chance of being successful. Having intelligence or developing conscientiousness at an early age, having conscientiousness. Now of course many people who have a higher IQ are also conscientious. So we're not really looking at some sort of trend that affects every single person. This negative correlation between IQ and conscientiousness is overall. This is from studies with fairly large samples. That doesn't mean that any particular individual with a high IQ would not be conscientious. So what does all this mean in terms of achieving success, specifically earnings, which is only one way, of course, to measure success, but it's an easy way to measure. It can be easily quantified. Well, it tells us that there are many ways to become successful. Intelligence makes it easier to become successful in many ways but it doesn't explain a large proportion when you look at all of the different types of ways to earn income. It explains again about 15 percent of the variance. That's larger than a lot of other variables but it's not the majority. Also we know that personality traits play a large part in success too. Probably there's a bit of luck, a bit of random error in there as well. So if someone is not conscientious, and they don't have some of the other personality traits that might be somewhat tied to success, although to a lesser extent than conscientiousness, like openness to experience or being lower in agreeableness, and they don't have high IQ, there are still a number of ways to become successful and to earn income. I hope you found this description of intelligence and success and conscientiousness to be interesting. Thanks for watching.